If you're looking to make the most of your hotel points, this video is for you. Make sure you stay until the end because I am also including a demo where you can watch me do some of these award searches in real time to figure out how to get 10 cents per point or more for different hotel redemptions. Today, I'm joined by Marcus in a free coaching session. Each week, I give out a free one-on-one -on -one points coaching session through my newsletter, which you can sign up for by using the link in the description box and the comments. You'll be able to ask me any questions that you have about earning points, redeeming points, credit card strategy, or anything else on your mind in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Also, shout out to Marcus for being our most engaged YouTube commenter. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for your support as we grow this channel. Yeah, you applied for like three cards in a day, right? You did the app aroma. <laughs> I've never even considered that before, but I was like, I wonder if this will work. And I thought, what a way to start off the new year. I'm not gonna be able to keep up that pace for sure, but three cards in one day, and I'm on the precipice of finalizing plans for a around the world trip with my mom, which is like totally a nail biter for me because I'm so new to this, but I'm going with the flow. Yeah, awesome, congrats. Thanks. Do you know what stops? Do you have like the flights planned out? 10 cities and I just don't have the first leg because I'm relying on the last minute, you know, like two to three week window for the ANA Virgin Atlantic pack. So in a couple weeks, I should see the availability. I've been tracking that availability for like the past four or five months and it's consistently there except for December. It dried up in December and mm -hmm. but it's back and I'm pretty confident, but it'll, it's kind of funny. Like if that doesn't happen, I have to find another way there so that I can continue the rest of the trip. <laughs> yeah. yeah, cool. And happy new year, by the way. Happy new year. Yeah, it's it's good to see you again. I'm doing good, excited for the new year. Trying to get all of like my goals and everything set. Apparently, I, I keep thinking I'm like, did everyone on Instagram die? All of my videos have gotten like no engagement. And then every time I post the Target deal, everyone's like, yeah, this is the best deal ever. And I'm like, no. I was like, do you guys want to earn points? Do you want to spend points? Do you want status? I was like, look at these promos for how you can like travel for free. And people are like, I want the $80 from Target. I'm like, you could save $4,000 on first class flights. And they're like, I want milk from Target. If they all get in the game, I just don't want them to take up all the ANA availability before I get to Asia. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. There's there's not there's not risk of that yeah okay. more award space for you so hey, hey and listen your business card episode you know the master class hit at the right time because obviously i got three on one day so mm -hmm. thanks for that and also thanks for the extra ihg tip which is what i went for so that really helped thanks do you have ambassador status now for like the rest of the year well so here's you know the nuances it's, you know, with that premier business card, the IHG premier business, that's platinum elite and it's, it doesn't come right away. So it, they said it might take six to eight weeks, although they, they just say that and they say usually it's less than six to eight. And I called both IHG and Chase to see if there's anything I could do to like make it faster. So they can start booking my trips, my hotel stays, because I don't want to book it without the fourth night free. And they were like, you're just gonna have to wait. So it's not right away. Oh, that wasn't even the IHG tip I thought you were talking about. I thought you were talking about the one where like, if you bought Ambassador, you could extend your Platinum. Uh, that expired last year, but yeah. that's the one I thought you were talking no, about. You answered my question in the Patreon about which hotel card you'd recommend. And so I went with that recommendation. Yeah, cool. So yeah, I got your email, but are there any questions I can help answer for you at this time? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I'm just starting to figure out what my 2023 credit card plan should be and of course i started off with a you know three on one day kind of thing was that on was january 1st january 2nd i don't know i, <laughs> I couldn't pull the trigger right on january 1st but i didn't know i was going to get the third one <laughs> i didn't know i was going to get the second one even but i have all three so i'm good to go for a little while i've got eleven thousand in minimum spend to meet in the next three months which is doable but you know a little bit of a stretch but i thought i would love your help to think about what's beyond that. And part of it is my lack of understanding of 524. And if the goal, that's my first question is, going into 2023, is the goal to hover around 424? Because I won't be, I'm at 424 now. And do I not want to go above 424? And knowing that I'll be back down, you know, in the beginning of 
2024. Do you have all the good Chase cars already? Do you have the Chase Sapphire, Chase Freedom, Flex, Unlimited, all like the, the trifectas between business and personal? So what I don't have is I don't have, I only have the OG Freedom. So I don't have either the Unlimited or the Flex. And I've been eyeing the Aero plan just because I've heard so much about like how good the Aero plan. Okay, well, that's an interesting reaction. <laughs> uh, the Aero plan program is great. The card is like, eh, it's kind of like Hyatt. I love the Hyatt program, but like the Hyatt card offer is kind of lame. I would just transfer a lot of things into Aero plan. It depends on what else you want to do. If there's nothing else to get, I mean, that's, it's not the worst thing, it, but when is your, when did you get your Sapphire? Is it coming up on like the four year mark? One more year will be the four year mark. Okay. That's definitely something I would stay under five over 24 for. Like if you go up to five over 24 now, but something's going to roll off so that you can turn that card later, that's a good way to like just downgrade it to a Chase Freedom Flex, then go get a new Sapphire because that's a better use of a five over 24 spot. Okay. So if I'm at 424 now, you're saying stay at 424. That would be for an entire year, basically. I would downgrade like in December and then be ready to reapply in January when the four years rolls. You could either just stay at 424 the whole year, or is there a, a scenario where you bump up to 5 over 24, but something's going to roll off anyway? Like, is anything going to roll off the, the 24 mark? Nothing, no, rolls, but... nothing rolls off the 24 mark until January. I mean, you could wait until January if you wanted to, to, to do the churn, but I would focus on business cards if that is the case, like load up on, especially Chase business cards while you're under five over 24. So that could be a, a card strategy, but also just trying to figure out where you want to go. Cause do you have all your hotels done for this around the world thing? That could be the good like focus is use up your Chase point for Hyatt, maybe get a couple of Marriott cards to use um, for the free night certificates. Like you and your mom could each get a Marriott card and then each of you would have three free nights to use along this trip. So I would probably focus on that. You're gonna have your IHG stuff. Uh, do you have like a city premiere card? I have a city premiere, that's my oldest card. So you're saying though, focus on like Marriott business? You could do Marriott business, or if you wanted to use up your five over 24, you could do the Marriott Bonvoy Boundless. Do you have any Marriott cards already? So no, I don't, I, the IHG that I just got is my very first hotel card. You could do the Marriott business to avoid the five over 24 thing. And then you would have one free night with that, so. What other business cards would you, so I already have like, two Chase Inks and two Chase Unlimited. I have the Amex Blue Business Plus, and I have now the ones I just got, the Wyndham Business and IHG Business. If I stay with business cards this year to stay under 524, what other business cards would you recommend? Depends if you want to go heavy with Amex, you could get like the Business Platinum or the Business Gold just for the sign up bonus. Marriott Bonvoy Business, maybe. Hilton, maybe, but I don't like that one because it doesn't even come with a free night. Neither does the Hyatt one. So mm. yeah, if you want to go easy, then Marriott. If you want to go hard, then Amex Business Platinum. Okay, so it does sound like if my year to try to stay under 424 so that by the end of the year, I'm still under 524 for the Sapphire churn, that I should just stay with business cards. And that would mean basically the Marriott or the Amex. Yeah, because you already have most of like the the Chase business ones. Yeah. Cause, like, there's Chase business Hyatt, but it's not great. I recommend it for people who are, who are business owners. We're like, I'm spending so much money. How can I capitalize on it? I'm like, you could get free globalist status just by like doing business as usual for people who are not in that situation. Like it's not really great. I'm going to try to get, we'll see, this is kind of a you know, sort of back of the burner plan to get globalist, but if I spend a lot of time in China, there's a cheap Hyatt just outside of Guangzhou that, and I have some family uh, homes, you know, family people there. And so maybe that's the way I'll do it. But yeah, I don't have that much spend. So, okay. So let's see, that answers a lot of my questions related to my credit card plan for 2023. And my only other question is then the city premier. I know I noticed that there's that 80K sign up bonus right now. That's my oldest card. And if I downgrade it, and try to reapply right now i'd be jeopardizing like more than 200,000 points because Don't if i do that 
Don't do spend that. them first. That's another thing you can do with hotels is transfer them to choice hotels because there's a lot of those in Europe and Asia and it's better than in North America. So transfer them first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because just in case I, for whatever reason, they deny me the card, then I won't have a card to like use the points with, right? Yeah. And City has been tricky and honestly, they might hate you right now from how many cards you've opened with such velocity. So yep. I, I would I, actually not be optimistic that they approve what you're trying to do. I was denied a City double cash way back when. But anyway, can I, do you happen to know if I can transfer points to another person like I can with Chase? I don't know the rules for City. I have, yeah. They're the ones I played with the least because they keep rejecting my husband. So we just don't have City points. So I don't know, but I would use them for your choice yeah. hotels. Yeah, because your yeah. flights are all done. I'm like, oh, they're good for a lot of flights, like especially Turkish, but your flights are all good to go. So I would transfer them to choice hotels. Yeah, and we are planning to spend time in Norway, so that's perfect. And um, Oh, it's perfect for Norway. Yeah, it's great for Scandinavia. If not choice, that day I just have too many that for the nights I'm there, I would just transfer them to like either Turkish, like you said, or I don't know if the Virgin is a partner, but things that I would normally use. Yeah, just transfer somewhere that you use often. Virgin is a partner, Arlingus, Iberia, KLM, Flying Blue, Air France, Emirates, I think Air Canada is not, Cathay Pacific is, and Singapore Airlines is. So okay. those are some that you could transfer it to. Okay, that's plenty. Okay, and then my only other question is, now I'm so new to redeeming, I've never redeemed a hotel stay. So now I'm, I've, you know, I'm gonna transfer Chase points to Hyatt and try my hand at that. And I'm realizing that unlike, you know, business class redemptions where you can get four, five, six, even eight or more cents per point, Hyatt stays are not going to get me that far. So what would you consider is a good value for Hyatt points? Because it can really range. Like I'm seeing in Hong Kong, it, it, the you know, the cash price is decent that I may not use Hyatt for that. But what do you think is a good cents per point value? I aim for two cents per point. And I can normally get four if I'm doing like the sweet upgrade where like you pay for the base room and then you pay 6000 or 9000 per night. So I don't have to so. Without status, I won't be able to get that. No, there, it's not a status thing. It's just like for sale on the points where they're like, would you like to pay for the base room for like 20,000 points? Or do you want to just pay cash for the base room? It, it's available to everyone. You don't need status. You just pay for the upgrade in points. Oh, okay. Say it one more time. So pay for cash for the base price and upgrade with the points? Yes. When you go on Hyatt.com and say pay with points, there's a lot of hotels will have the option, not all of them, but a lot of them will be like, oh, do you want like the standard suite upgrade or the premium suite upgrade? And so if you go to the standard suite, it's an extra 6,000 points per night on top of the cash price of the base room. And sometimes you like, it's worth a lot of money where like the base room is super cheap. I like Hyatt Regencies for this. Base room is going to be like 200 bucks, $100. And then like the royalty presidential suite is like $700 a night. I'm like, Yes, I will gladly pay oh. 6,000 points to get a $600 upgrade because then it's like you got 10 cents per point. So all that to say, normally aim for two, but usually you can get a lot more by doing the sweet upgrade thing. The reason people don't do it is they're like, oh, I want it completely free and I don't want to like pay for the base room. I'm like, you're getting 10 cents per point. Yeah. So there's that. Oh, OK, because I was not even getting two at all, at all the hotels I was looking at. It's like 1.3, 1.7. I'm like, this is so low compared to flights. OK, that's what I'm going to do. Yep. so you'll see them if you click on the pay with points and then just scroll down because you have other options than just the standard room. Okay. Yep. Great. I don't even need status for that then. Yeah, you don't need status. You just outright pay for the, the upgrade. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. We covered a bunch of information in that coaching session about how to think about your credit card strategy if you already have a few cards and you're teetering on 5 over 24, and also how to maximize your points for some hotel options. If you enjoy this type of content where it's more of a candid conversation about how to approach points, please let me know by hitting the like button and be sure to subscribe for even more points and miles tips. 
So in that coaching session, I made a joke that my most popular Instagram content is the Target deal where I show people how to get a free $80 with Target over and over again with no impact to their credit score. Here's an example of that deal that I've shared in the past. Guess who's back? Is your favorite deal ever where you get a free $80 at Target over and over again with zero impact to your credit score or 5 over 24? So make sure you save this deal and share it with all your friends who love shopping at Target. The Target debit card deal is back this time until January 14th. You can apply in-store or visit Target.com slash RedCard. Once you're approved, you'll receive a coupon for $40 off of a $40 purchase in your physical mail, not your email. Take a photo of that coupon code because you can use it once in-store and then once again online for a total of $80 saved. The photo comes in handy in case the store clerk discards of your coupon, so that way you can still use the coupon code online all the way through March 15th. Once you've used up the $80, you can go ahead and close the debit card, wait at least 90 days, and apply again the next time this promotion is live to get the $80 over and over again. So that's $240, maybe even $320 of free stuff from Target each year since this promotion comes up again and again. Exclusions apply, so make sure you check the caption for more details. Remember, this deal is good for the debit card, but do not get the credit card. If you'd like the direct link to this application, as well as another recommendation for how to earn even more points at Target for a limited time, comment below with the word hashtag Target and I will send you all of the info. If you want to see even more deals like that where it's not necessarily related to travel but still saves you money, let me know in the comments. Another redemption we talked about was transferring city points to choice hotels, especially for hotel redemptions in Northern Europe. Let's take a look at what this type of redemption would look like. All right, in this demo, we are gonna talk about how you can get a lot of value out of your city thank you points by transferring them over to Choice Hotels. So in that coaching call, we mentioned Norway. So I plugged in Oslo, Norway in the search box. An interesting thing about the Choice Hotels website is that if you wanna make a points booking, it can only be up to 100 days out. So you can do the math on when I'm recording this video, but the furthest out I could book was April 19th through April 20th. Another quirky thing about their site, I could not figure out how to get this into dollars. I'm sure it's right in front of me and I'm missing it, but I couldn't figure out how to translate it. So I just Googled how many Norwegian krona are in $1. It's about a 10 to one ratio. And luckily I can do that math in my head because that's what actuarial exams are for. So let's take a look at this first one, Hotel Christiana Theater. And it's about 1590 krona, so $159. How much would this cost in points? 20,000 choice points. But remember, city thank you points will transfer over to choice hotels at a one to two ratio. So you would only need to transfer over 10,000 city thank you points in order to get this hotel night. If we take $159 divided by 10,000 points, that is a cents per point redemption of about 1.6 cents per point. So eh, not great. Let's see if the other ones are any better. Comfort Hotel Grand Central is going to be about $190. And then the points price is 16,000 points, which means we only need 8,000 thank you points. So 190 divided by 8,000 is 2.4 cents per point. Not bad at all. And then this third one that we're gonna look at as an example would be about $229. Again, 16,000 points required, which means we would need to transfer over 8,000 to 29 divided by 8,000. That is a valuation of 2.9 cents per point. So that's a very, very solid redemption if you want to get a lot out of your city thank you points. Choice hotels in the United States are not known for being very luxurious. They're actually known for being very budget hotels, but they're the same brands that you'll find over here in Norway. You have Clarion, you have Comfort Hotel. The Ascen collection tends to be much nicer actually. But if you're wanting to make a lot of your points and you're like, oh, I'm kind of a budget traveler. I don't really want to stay at all of those luxury places, but I do want to get a lot of value out of my points. This would be an excellent way to use some city thank you points. And lastly, we talked about how you can easily get a ton of value from each Hyatt point by opting for the cash plus suite upgrade option like this. In this tutorial, we are going to go over how to get the most out of your Hyatt points by doing a suite upgrade redemption. In our coaching call, we were talking about Malaysia. So I typed in Kuala Lumpur, I picked some random dates, and here are some of the different hotel options that we have. I'm gonna look at this top one. So the Grand Hyatt Kuala Lumpur is either 12,000 points per night or $173 per night. Personally, when faced with that choice, I would just pay $173. I value Hyatt points at about two cents per point. So I don't really wanna pay 12,000 points per night unless the hotel is going to cost me $240 otherwise. But let's go ahead and view all of the different rates that are available 
or the Grand Hyatt Kuala Lumpur. So like we said, we could pay 12,000 points for a standard room free night. I don't really want to do that. We also have the option to do a standard suite for 20,000 points or a premium suite for 24,000 points. But what I'm actually interested in, if you always scroll all the way to the right, this is usually where they put them. I'm looking for the LP Suite Points Upgrade or the Upgrade Premium Suite. This is gonna be 222 plus 6,000 points or 222 plus 9,000 points. Now, is that a good deal? On the LP Suite Upgrade, we see that the Grand Suite can be had for 222 plus 6,000 or on the Upgrade Premium Suite, you could get the Grand Executive Suite for 222 plus 9,000. To figure out if that's a good deal, we're gonna view the actual rates for these rooms. So, always scroll to the bottom because this is gonna be the really expensive rooms. The Grand Executive Suite normally would cost 887. So to calculate which one I would rather do, I would take 887 minus 222 divided by 9,000 points. That gives us a redemption rate of 7.4 cents per point, which is really, really good, way better than the less than two cents per point we would get if we just redeemed 12,000 points for the standard room. The grand suite math is not quite as good, but you could get this for, let's see, 459 minus 222 divided by 6,000. That's going to be about four cents per point. Again, not bad at all. That's about twice what I would normally aim for with Hyatt anyway, but you can really, really maximize it if you wanted to go for the Grand Executive Suite and you're willing to pay out 222 plus 9,000 points per night to get this nearly $900 room. And it's probably going to be more than 900 once you add on taxes and fees anyway. So that's just one example of how you could do the Hyatt Suite upgrade with points to really maximize your points. Here's another example of where you could use that sweet upgrade trick to really maximize your Hyatt points. So we're looking at the Grand Hyatt Tokyo. I punched in some random dates and this one would cost 25,000 points per night. Let's look at the cash price for just the standard room, which is the two twin beds. Ooh, $591. That is very steep. So if we were to take 591 divided by 25,000 in order to calculate the cents per point, that's about 2.4 cents per point. So very solid on just the standard room, but here's where you can really get a lot of value out of your points is if we click on view points, scroll all the way to the right and click on LP Suite points upgrade. Again, not every hotel is going to have this option. You can see this one doesn't have the option for the premium suite upgrade for this particular date where you add 9,000 points, but you can spend $622 plus 6,000 points for the Grand Executive Suite King. $622 obviously is still a lot of money, but let's see if it would be worth it to get the Grand Executive Suite King for that particular price. Okay, if we scroll down and look for the sticker price for the Grand Executive Suite King, that is a $1,300 a night room. So if we take $1,299 minus 622 divided by 6,000, that is 11.2 cents per point, ladies and gentlemen. So it does take a little bit of spend on the forefront to just spend $622 in order to get that $1,300 suite, but you're basically getting it half off at that point. So that's one way that you can really, really maximize your cents per point redemption, especially if you are low on points, but trying to meet a minimum spend, this could be a good strategy for how to approach that. I really hope those tutorials were helpful for you. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if there are any other apps or websites or other tricks that you would like to see a tutorial on. And if you'd like to hear even more tips about Hyatt stays on points, check out this video next.